Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I want to talk to you about these, e-bike chargers, or more specifically, how you can charge your electric bicycle faster. Now, for most of us, we're usually charging our e-bikes when we're not riding them. That means overnight or perhaps at work after we ride to work and charge during the day before riding home. So usually charge time is not a huge issue. If an e-bike has a four to seven-ish hour charge time, it doesn't bother most people. But sometimes, and I know if you're like me, you like to have a faster charge time for cases where perhaps you forgot to charge your bike before a ride. So maybe an hour before you frantically plug it in and try to get as many electrons in there as possible. For times like that, it's nice to be able to charge quicker than your stock charger will allow. Now, the best way to increase your charging time is of course to use a higher power charger, and that's the bulk of what this video is going to be about, finding the right higher power charger for your specific e-bike. But there are still a few tips and tricks for free ways you can charge faster that you don't have to buy anything, just ways to use your stock charger. So we'll start right there. Now right off the bat, one of the first tricks for reducing your charge time is not to charge to 100%. Some of you might already know this, but it's not necessarily common knowledge, in that the last little portion of a lithium ion battery's charging range charges much slower than the bulk of the charging. That means if you're starting with a pretty empty battery, say you're at you know 10% or so, and you start charging up, it's going to charge at full power most of the way, but that last you know maybe 10-15% of the battery charge is going to start tapering off in power, and that's really going to slow down. So what that means is if you're trying to maximize the amount of power you get in there in a shorter period of time, don't worry about charging all the way until your charger turns green. When that light turns green, sure, you're at 100%, but you waited a lot of extra time at the end there. Instead, if you charge to something around 80% or so, you're going to be using all of the full power range of your charger and not wasting time waiting at the end. Now, if you need 100% charge, that's not going to help you. If you really need to fill your battery up all the way before a long ride, you'll have to wait until it's full. But for just, you know, everyday riding, don't feel like you have to wait all the way until that light on your charger turns green. Next, make sure you're charging in an optimum temperature range. That means likely somewhere between about 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. Many battery management systems, or BMSs, will actually slow down the charging power when you're above or below that temperature range because it's not as healthy for the battery to charge quickly at such battery temperature extremes. Obviously for us below 10 or above 30 C isn't really that extreme, but for batteries it is. They want to charge in that nice happy sort of room temperature range. Not all batteries and BMSs do this, especially cheaper batteries are just going to let themselves charge at full power no matter the temperature, but nicer BMSs that actually have temperature regulation built into them will start to throttle back your charging if you're not in that sort of sweet spot. So there are a few of those tips and tricks you can do to use your stock charger more effectively, but if you really want to shorten your charging time and cut it in half or more, you're going to have to upgrade to a higher power charger. Now some e-bike companies actually have these in stock already. You can check with your retailer and it could be that you can just pay a little extra for a higher power charger. That's the best method because you know you're getting the exact one built for your e-bike. If your e-bike manufacturer does not offer a higher power charger, you'll have to find one on your own. Now it's not that hard, but there are a couple caveats here. One, there's a chance it could void your warranty, so perhaps check with your e-bike retailer before you do this just to make sure that they're not going to have a problem with you using a higher power charger. It's probably impossible for them to tell if you're using a higher power charger, but just, you know, a word to the wise. Next, you have to be careful doing this, and there are two important figures, two important numbers that you're going to need to feel comfortable with. The first is the voltage of your battery, and the second is the amperage of the charger. I'm going to go over both of those. It's really not that complicated, but if you don't feel comfortable with those electronic terms, then perhaps just stick to your conventional charger that already came with your e-bike. Okay, so let's start with the charging current, and this is really where the power of a charger comes from. The charging current of most stock e-bike charges is going to be around 2 amps. Generally, if let's say you've got a 48 volt 10 amp hour battery, it probably came with a fairly cheap simple 48 volt 2 amp charger. That's going to be about 100 watts or so of power, not really a high power charger. If you're not sure what the amperage of your charger is, you can just take your charger and look on the back of it. Here, this one is a 48 volt charger, and if I look on the back, the output is listed as 2 amps. Now the writing is in Mandarin, it appears but you get the idea here. If you look on another charger like I've got here, same thing, I can go to the output section and see that it is marked as a four amp charger. Now to determine the actual charging time of your battery with this charger, a simple equation to do this is to take the amp hours of your battery and divide it by the amps of your charger. So for example, if I've got a 48 volt 10 amp hour battery and I'm gonna use this two amp charger here, I'll simply take 10 amp hours, divide it by two amps from the charger, and that gives me five hours. Now it's gonna be a little bit longer than that because like I said before, the last part of the charging spectrum takes a little bit longer, 
but that's an approximation. I can cut this charging time down though simply by using a higher current charger. Now I'll want to make sure that I'm not going too high with the current and the absolute maximum I'm gonna say that you should go is half of your amp hour capacity. So if I've got that 48 volt 10 amp hour battery, I'm not gonna go above a five amp charger. And in fact, I'm really gonna recommend that you not go above 40% of your amp hour capacity just to avoid overstressing your battery and charging it at too high of a rate because it does take a toll on your battery over time. So for 40%, that would mean a 10 amp hour battery. I would recommend not going over a four amp charger. But let's take a look at what that does to charging time. Just like before, we said a 10 amp hour battery with a two amp charger gave us a five hour charge time. Well, if I swap that out to a four amp charger, it cuts the charge time to two and a half hours. Approximately, again, it'll be a little bit more than that. Now, just for fun, let's look at if we did that five amp charger, that drops us down to just two hours. But you see, we went from four hours to 2.5 to two hours. So that last you know, extra amp is kind of diminishing returns there. We've already cut our charge time in half by using a four amp charger and dropping to about 2.5 hours. So that's a pretty good bump. Next though, before you just run out and start buying a higher current charger, you need to make sure you're matching your voltage. This is critical. Voltage is the second number that you're gonna need to feel comfortable with, and you're gonna need to match it to your specific battery. Now the way you do this, again, is by checking your current charger. If you go and you look on the back of it, you'll see what the output voltage is. Here for this 48 volt battery, I can come down here and it tells me it's 54.6 volts. The reason for that is that for a lithium ion battery, not a lithium iron phosphate, but a typical lithium ion battery, which is what most e-bikes are, you're going to take the number of cells in series and multiply it by 4.2 volts, which is the full voltage of a lithium ion cell. So in this case, we've got 13 cells in series for a 48 volt battery. Multiply that by 4.2 and I get that magic 54.6 volt number. What that also means is that when someone tells you, hey, this is a 48 volt charger, it kind of is, but that 48 volts is the nominal voltage. That's the nominal, the named voltage, that's what it's called. Really, it's a 54.6 volt charger. If I plug this into the wall and I measure it with a multimeter at the output, it'll tell me 54.6 volts. Now, when I plug it into my 48 volt battery, the voltage is going to be lower. The voltage of the charger will drop to match the battery, then it will slowly raise it up to 54.6 volts. All right, those are a lot of numbers, but the point is you wanna match the voltage of your current charger to the voltage of the replacement higher power charger you're getting. So for example, a 36 volt battery, that's gonna be 10 cells in series, 10 times 4.2 volts per cell, that's 42.0 volts. So I'm gonna go on Amazon, I'm gonna type in the voltage of the charger I'm looking for and a higher current number. So if I wanna replace this 48 volt charger that's a two amp charger with a four amp, I'm just gonna go on and I'm gonna type in 54.6 volt four amp lithium battery charger. And I'm gonna get a bunch of results that pop up. You know, there's gonna be quite a price range. I'm gonna to have to look for one that has the right connector. For example, here I've got a XT60 connector, DC barrel connectors are very common. Some batteries use XLRs, etc. I've shown in a previous video how to swap that connector. If you can't find the exact one for yours, I'll link that video up here. Actually, I think it's on this side if I got my cards right. But that's the real name of the game, is matching those two numbers. You gotta get your voltage correct, and you've gotta use the right current to make sure you're not putting too much power into your battery. The voltage can be found on the back of your charger, or you could calculate it based on the number of cells in your battery, and the current should be less than about 40% of the amp hours of your battery. So for a 10 amp hour battery, we're talking about four amps max. So that's the long and the short of it. Again, if you do not feel comfortable swapping out your charger though, please just stick to your original charger. You wanna make sure you get those numbers right or you could do damage or worse to your battery. Now, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. Last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video who will win a free copy of one of my books. And the randomly selected commenter is... Dad's Driveway. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The E-Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below, you can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. Or if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. Alright, thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you here next time.